Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook along with Dwayne Buzzy with Bolt Marketing. We have higher grain trade today, kind of led by the wheat market with the livestock futures. Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of two-sided trade. We're currently mixed. And I want to talk first of all about the wheat market, which is kind of taking the leadership role here, Dwayne. And some of that seems to be either geopolitical concerns or concerns about the Black Sea export corridor. How much of it, too, is tied to just the fact that funds are really short in these markets, especially Chicago? Yeah, I think that's the biggest story, actually. You know, funds have been selling wheat all the time, whether it's in a spread or just selling wheat by itself. And and I think all these little bullish stories are getting together. These little bullish stories include, you know, the Russia-Ukraine tensions rising a little bit. And, and rightfully so. I've heard some rumors of something happened February 15th. I, I don't think that's really how they do it in war. I don't think they plan out a certain day, but we'll see. But you get all these tiny little bullish stories mixed with a chart that really looks like we've seen a seasonal bottom and we bounced right. off it significantly when it comes to Kansas City wheat. So if, if I'm a fund and I'm holding a massive short position and still have some profits, I, I sure would be tempted to get out of it. And I think that's what we're seeing today. Yeah. And let's talk about the charts now that you mentioned that because we're above $9 here in wheat futures yeah. for Kansas City, which we haven't closed above that level. If we did, what would that open the door to, do you think? That would really help if I'm looking at the Kansas City chart here. Yeah, we're right up to about the 100-day moving average. March has actually has traded above it today. If you can close above that today, say it close at like 905, 906, that should open the door to actually new buying. Like what I just talked about was the funds getting out of short positions or short right. covering. You know, that, that's fine. That's almost how every rally starts. But to really get a significant rally, you need new people actually coming in to buy. You need the open interest to increase on an up day where people are buying the contracts. And from a chart side of it, that's what you need to see is these closes above these moving averages to maybe make the funds say, I want to buy the wheat market. Okay. And funds are so short in Chicago. Hopefully it gets them yep. to cover some of these shorts too, especially if we could get you know, a close above $8 there, I think would help. So is corn following wheat here today, or is that market following crude oil? And talk about um, crude oil and the rally here today with these Russian production cuts. Yeah, it's definitely following both those markets. I don't think corn by itself has a, a really great bullish story. In fact, leading up to the last two days, corn the corn market has been coiling on a chart. You know, really tight little range, can't take out the high, can't take out the low from the previous right. day. So we were really built up a little bit of momentum that when we do break it, we break it significantly. Now, ironically, we broke it yesterday to the downside. It just felt like lackluster, no real news. You know, we're not close to the U.S. spring planting, you know, acreage battle or delays that way. So we weren't going to rally the market. So it just kind of sold off. But then today, following wheat, we made that new low, but now we made a higher high. And looks like we're right in the middle of the market here now. I'd really love to see it close near the, the highs of the range today. It would help the chart pattern. I'm afraid we probably won't do it, but corn is definitely just a follower right now. And you're right. Yeah, Russia cutting back on oil production has really helped the crude oil market, which is helping corn. But I think we need to see a lot more of that, Michelle. You know, if I'm going to really get corn up in the $7 range, it seems like we're going to have to be higher than 70s for that crude oil market. Yeah. We've also been trading um, Argentina weather and the production cuts that we've gotten both yeah. out of the Rosario and the Buenos Aires Grain Exchange this week on top of USDA's. And so that's been driving not only corn, but maybe even more so the soybean market. So is so are the soybean traders trading that this morning or what's going on in soybeans? I, I think a little bit. I, I think it's weird. I kind of grin a little bit when I talk about it. I think the wheat market's actually leading everything, but it, but it really it is. is. It's okay. helping pull the corn and the soybeans up too. But you're right. Every time you rally on the soybeans or we go down and test support, you know, somebody's going to mention the Argentina crop in trouble and conditions a little bit worse yesterday for the corn anyway. Soybeans, I think we're a, a touch better, but there's still... Still a lot of dryness in Argentina, still a big concern there, but you know, Brazil's monster crop is definitely going to <laughs> level off the South American production. So it's not going to be a major problem, but it's still, it's not as big of a crop as we thought we were going to have out of Argentina. That's for darn sure. I, th I think you still need to see more production cuts. Yeah. And of course it's been driving the meal market and the meal market is kind of what we've been watching here in terms yeah. of the sustained rally in soybeans. And we're back up in soybean meal close yeah. to these contract high areas again, aren't we? I know. We're all watching that same $500 level yeah. in March soybean meal. You know, we're right up against it as you and I are doing this interview now. A close above that would be very significant. I 
I like it and it's fun and I think we will get above 500, but I can't help to think that we're maybe overdoing the meal market just a little bit because these Argentina crush plants, Michelle, are not going to shut down. They're, they're going to just import beans from Brazil and then keep grinding. So there's going to be Argentina soybean meal this next year, but I understand it's a futures market. We got to rally first until we see that happen. No, I would agree with you. And still, soybeans are within our trading range, aren't we? Oh, man. It's like we're, yeah, it's definitely that time of year where we're chopping a lot. And mm -hmm. I understand that, you know, we don't have North American weather going on. But we've got good support under the market with a lot of bears out there suggesting we need to work lower. So I'll take it, I guess. It is still, anyway, a, a short-term bull myself. I still think we can bust out of these patterns and and get higher. We do have the funds buying soybeans and corn. So as long as they're still buying, I'm still somewhat bullish the both those markets actually. Okay. Well, the rally in the corn market seems to have weighed on the feeders, but live cattle are holding together here, pushed by some better cash trade, at least in the north, right? Yeah, right. I think that was you that broke that story yesterday. I saw that, you know, cash cattle traded higher yesterday afternoon in the north. Um you know, when I go to the USDA websites and look at the cash cattle trade there, it was a little bit more disappointing, some 158s, 159s. But you really got to take that with a grain of salt, too, because it's such a small percentage of what is actually trading. And like a producer pointed out to me, he said, well, where are those cash cattle coming from? Because there's some feedlots in Nebraska that have been very muddy all winter long. And, and those fat steers are, are carrying mud. So they're going to be discounted, of course. And then you get further yeah. up here, actually, the, the steers look in very good shape here because we've we had a snowpack they've been laying on with some bedding too. So, you know, the cash cattle there might be that 162, 164. We got a lot of guys holding out up here. Yeah. And we still haven't seen really any business in the South. Uh, I think the Fed cattle exchange had a little 159, but other than that, I haven't seen anything. It'll probably break after you and I get done with this interview. <laughs> probably. That's how it always works, it seems. But, you know, cattle certainly seem to be a buy the dip kind of a a momentum going on here. And so we could easily be back up at a contract highs here on a moment's notice. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we came into this week, right at the contract highs, we broke that upward channel to the upside. So, it, you know, to have a pullback that we did the middle of this week, didn't surprise me at all, but boy, we didn't pull back much, Michelle, it, the market is still a little overbought technically and could get sold off. But I think with the boxes going higher this week, slaughter down a little bit, I do think you're right. After we get done with the interview, we're going to have higher cash cattle trade, maybe after the market's closed today. So I, I think we can make another leg higher here soon. If not right away Monday, I think the following week or something we will. Right. We're seeing kind of the forward spreads work in here. That's usually a good indication there's some cash movement out there. What about this hog market? I don't even want to talk to you about that because <laughs> it has been a really frustrating market here with the big slide that we've had. Um, we've seen maybe a little bit of a bottom put in this cash market, yet we can't seem to get the funds really to get out of these short positions they're in either. No, and if I was a fund, I don't think I'd be getting out of short positions either. I, it, like you mentioned, the cash market looks like it's bottoming a little bit, but I don't know if it's a bottom or if it's just a pause. It, it okay. actually might trend lower. It, I guess that's what I'm going to say it's going to do. I, I know April's at 83 bucks, but I think we're going to be trading in the 70s here yet, which makes me a little bit concerned for the cattle market because, man, that's a big wide spread between live cattle making contract highs and, and hogs stinking. But it's just the way it is right now. All right. Appreciate your time as always. Uh, that is Wayne Bussey with Bolt Marketing and Markets Now.